All right, this video is just a quick briefer on the difference between revolutions, degrees, and radians, and some things that you should know about them. So hopefully you're familiar with what all of these are by now, but just in case there's something left to learn, that's what this video is for. So let's draw a wheel here. If this wheel rotated one time, that would be one revolution, which is equal to 360 degrees of rotation, uh, and that's also equal to 2 pi radians of rotation. So usually it's pretty quick to switch between these, but uh, just to clarify any abstraction here, 2 pi is just 2 times pi. That's equal to 6.28 approximately uh, radians. So if you really don't like using the pi symbol, you can, you can calculate it out and just truncate some decimal places, but anytime you're able to, you should really be leaving in the pi there. It's just a more accurate result. So let's draw on the center of our circle here. And if we wanted to chop this up into degrees, we would literally just hack it into 360 tiny little pieces. Actually, they would be a little bit even smaller than that. Um, but let's not go the whole way around the circle doing that. Um, but you get the idea. One full pass of the circle is equal to 360 degrees. Um, but let's chop it into 6.28 radians or 2 pi radians. So that would pretty much look like if we took the first one here, we'd be about like this, then here, then like somewhere over here, um, somewhere down about there, boom, this, and then the last little bit like that. So we have the circle chopped into 6.28 parts, but really what we're looking at here is if we draw some radiuses going out from the center of the circle, right, this is R and this is R, and the radian is pretty cool because for theta here, this is equal to one radian when the arc is also equal to R. So this curved line here, like this, that the distance from here to here along that circular path is r, then we get one radian as the angle that's showing up in here. So that means that this is also one radius, this is also one radius, this is, whoa, this is also r, this is also r, r, and this little last guy in here is about 0 0.28 r, right? That would give us 6.28 radians in total to complete the full circle or 2 pi radians. Now, if you want to do some conversions between degrees and radians, the conversion factor is just 360 degrees per 2 pi radians. Uh, so if you divide 360 divided by 2 pi, you get about 57.3 degrees. So this angle in here is also equal to approximately 57.3 degrees. And if you wanted to convert between revolutions and radians, we just have one revolution is equal, uh, divided by two pi radians that's equal to each other. This, uh, this fraction here is, uh, is unity. So we have radians, so one divided by two pi, that gives approximately 0 0.16 revolutions, which makes this angle in here also 0 0.16 revolutions. And you can work these all backwards, like 0 0.16 times 2 pi will give you one revolution. So and vice versa, you can go between degrees, radians, and revolutions pretty easily, just multiplying by unity fractions using these three values. So let's actually, yeah, let's, let's do some more conversions along those lines. Let's convert, I don't know, let's say like four revolutions. Uh, we want to convert this to radians. So what we would do is we would multiply this by the fraction that has revolutions on the bottom. So one revolution times two pi radians on top. Four times two pi divided by one is equal to eight pi radians, right? Because revolution here cancels out with revolution there. And you can also, you can bring this into, uh, you can get rid of the pi if you want, it would be about 25.1 radians. But anytime you're able to leave the pi in, it's, uh, it's recommended. Um, let's do another example. Let's convert maybe 270 degrees, and let's put this into revolutions. So to do that, we would multiply this by the fraction where we have degrees on the bottom, so 360 degrees, and revolutions on top, that would be one revolution. So the degrees here are going to cancel out with the degrees there. 
And 270 times 1 divided by 360 gives us 0 0.75 revolutions. Let's do one more conversion from, I don't know, let's go from radians to degrees. So let's say we have 8 pi radians. Radians, you know, like this number here. Um, and let's convert that to degrees. So we're going to multiply by the fraction where radians is on the bottom. 2 pi radians and 360 degrees on the top. So the radians are going to cancel out. Uh, when we, we can keep this kind of clean, like this pi will cancel out with that pi. So really we have 8 times 360 over 2. And that's going to give us 1440 degrees, which is the equivalent value. And uh, for those that are familiar with you know sports like, uh, I don't know, snowboarding or skiing or something where people are spinning a bunch, 1440 degrees represents four spins, which is exactly what it was up here, eight pi radians, four revolutions. Um, so there you go. You can just convert pretty quickly between all of those. One other thing that's going to come up a lot in circular motion problems is converting between, uh, like introducing a unit of time as well. So for example, you'll often see something like, um, I don't know, RPM. So let's say we have 90 RPM. This is revolutions per minute. So this would be equal to 90 revolutions per minute. And often we want to convert this into units of radians per second or, or something like that, or degrees per hour. Actually, not that, but typically you always want to convert to radians per second. Uh, and we can do that really easily. So we're going to convert 90 revolutions per minute to... Uh, radians per second so all we have to do is we have to knock out this revolution term so again we put one rev get it on the bottom and then we put the radians on top that's equivalent to so 2 pi radians okay and that is basically going to cancel out revolutions with revolutions and then in the same step we're going to multiply we want to get rid of the minutes so we just do the conversion for one minute for 60 seconds again this is another unity fraction which is going to so basically we're just multiplying the whole thing by one but we're changing the units and canceling out the minutes we're going to be left with radians on the top and seconds on the bottom and when you multiply 90 times 2 pi divided by 60 we're left with 3 pi radians per second or if you really want, you can knock out that, or you can get rid of the pi, but I don't recommend it, uh, and have 9.4, approximately, radians per second. And radians per second, like I was saying before, is a really important unit for us because that's the units of angular speed, which is going to be showing up in almost every circular motion problem going forward. And you're often given units of RPM or something to start with, and you'll often be converting from RPM to radians per second. So that's how you do it. That's how you convert between a lot of different, you know, just revolutions, degrees, or radians. And uh, that should be enough to get you going for the next video.